Hi, and welcome to Crazy Egg. Today I'm going to go through a couple of snapshots and give you a brief overview of how you would use our snapshot reports to analyze your page. So when you first open your snapshot report, you're brought to the reports dashboard where you are looking at the heat map report. As you can see, when I click on the report, it zooms out. If I click on it again, it zooms back in so I can see a portion of the page and scroll down. One of the things that I like to do first is remove the layer with scroll map on the heat map report. I do like to click out and then I like to try to center the page so I can see the whole page in my screen. And what I'm looking for is where are the hot spots on my page? Are the clicks occurring in areas where I would expect them? Or are clicks occurring where I know they're dead space? In this particular example, the majority of clicks are occurring exactly where I would expect them to be on the page. I can click again and zoom back in and get a more detailed look at where those clicks were. The brighter the color or closer to white, the more popular that element is to click on. These blue clicks are what we would consider one-off clicks. Not a lot of clicks in these areas, but enough that we shaded them blue. The very next thing I like to do is go to the scroll map report. Now the scroll map report is going to show you where visitors have stopped scrolling Something in that area has caught their attention. And then we color code it to show you how many people are stopping in that area so that you know what is catching people's attention, what's engaging them. So first thing I like to do is find my average fold on a report. Anything above the average fold is what visitors are able to see, no matter the screen type without scrolling. From here, what I like to do is zoom out, center my page, and here what I'm looking for is the color bands. So I can see from here up is definitely catching people's engagement. I can see some bleeding through of the green in the blue area here. And then I can see that this area has turned cooler, it's blue but it picks back up again with this green. And then I'm just gonna scroll just a little bit further so we can see more of the page. And then it gets blue down here. Note, I have not used the term drop off. And that's very important when you're talking about the scroll map when you're looking at your crazy egg snapshots. If I zoom back in, and I go back to the heat map, and now I turn the layer with scroll map back on. So now I have my scroll map along the left-hand side. If I scroll down to some of these blue areas, the reason I didn't use the term drop off is because you can see in this area, yes, the scroll map is blue, but according to the heat map, there's quite a bit of activity that's happening on the signing up here to subscribe to our email newsletter. So the importance here is the popularity is at 27%. So if you take 27% and times it by the total number of visits that have been tracked while the snapshot was gathering data, that's how many visitors saw this area of the page. And of those visitors, there was quite a bit of engagement here and even throughout with these light blue clicks. It's the same thing when we come down to the bottom of the page. Only 11% have made it down this far on the page. So 11% times the total number of visits again. But as you can see, this number two in the pigmentation is white. So it is highly clicked upon. The last is bleeding through red. So it's the second most clicked on item along with three and 10 that has green. So 
Even though a lot of visitors are not coming down to the bottom of the page, those who have made it down are clearly engaging with content on the page. So something to keep in mind when you're analyzing both your heat map and your scroll map report. Now you can go in any order when you're viewing these reports. You don't have to go left to right or right to left. I prefer a different type of order in which I'm taking you guys through. And it really comes down to what question are you trying to answer as to which report is the best one to look at. So the confetti report is the report that shows you the aggregation of all the clicks that have been made on your page. And then we offer a filter of 25 different filters that you can use to get a better idea of who are the people or the groups of people that are making these clicks. So by default, we're on refer. And if I wanted to zone in on all the ones that come from, say, Google, regardless of what country, I can look for patterns to see if Google traffic, and I will just minimize this, if Google traffic is having, regardless of country, people click in the same area. Now, I keep referring to country, and that's simply because Google has specific domains for each country. If I specifically wanted to know about country, I would use my filter to come to country. And now I can look for, say, France. And even though I'm not doing any marketing in France, see if those people that are coming from France are clicking on meaningful areas. So clicking on the logo, not as meaningful, but using the search field, clicking on links, see if they're signing up. They're not signing up. So I may not want to spend additional marketing dollars to France, people targeting people from France just yet, but it's something I can keep an eye on. So that's the confetti report. Now the overlay report, I tend to use in junction with the list report. I prefer to go to the list report first. And the list report is our most technical of all our reports. It will show you everything you can visually see on this report on this page from your website and order it from the most number of clicks to the least. It's technical because we're using the element name and giving you the type of element. So depending how your web developers have named your pages, these names might be easy to read and understand, or they might be a little more technical. The not visible tab collects all the data on elements that have been clicked on that you visually can't see on this page. So for instance, we have a tab system over here. If a visitor came and clicked on all time tab, a new list of links would appear in this section where I'm moving my mouse. Any clicks on those links would show up under not visible. So anything in a drop down menu, a tab system, an accordion menu, carousel, we track all the clicks. Even if you've hidden your pop-ups or your banners from your snapshots, we're still tracking the clicks on those elements, and you'll find that information under not visible. The both tab combines both of these tabs and orders it from highest number of clicks to lowest. And then this is where the tie-in comes to the overlay report. Anything in blue is visible on this page and is also a hyperlink. If I scroll down just a little bit in the list report, anything that's whitish gray is an element that was found on the not visible tab, and I'm just getting the information that I see. Before I use the hyperlink, which is gonna take me to the overlay report, I'll point out one other thing. 
If you have a high exit rate on your website, either Google or Adobe Analytics has told you that, or you're not using either of those tools and you're wondering if you do, the list report on the both tab is a really good way to determine that. What will happen is typically the first 10 rows will all of be link type, and that will tell you that people are exiting your page. Now you can evaluate if that exit rate is a good exit rate or a bad exit rate by looking at the type of link. Is it taking them further into your page or website? Good exit rate. Is it opening up a tab on the same page? Good exit rate. And really not a true exit rate at that point. Or is it sending traffic to another website where you have a relationship with, you have some type of an agreement. That could be a good exit rate in that case. If you have no agreement or arrangement with that other site that you're sending your traffic to, then that would be considered possibly a bad exit rate. So focusing now our attention on the overlay report, if I click here, I know 701 clicks have occurred at the current hits, but you know, I kind of forget where the current hits element is. So I click on here and it has popped me over to the overlay report and it's taken me right to that element and has provided me an expansion. So clicking on this plus sign gives me an expansion where I see the same filter list of 25 filters that we saw in the confetti report so now I can drill down and learn even more about the people who specifically clicked on this given element. So from the heat map, you see what's the hottest elements that are being clicked on. It's from the overlay in the list report that you find out what is the number of clicks that occurred on that element and that further dig down into who are the people that are making the clicks here. Now the overlay report has a lot of power and I'm only going to skim the surface here. The overlay report as I just shown is a way to drill down and find out what is happening on a specific element. Notice though that I have this filtered on live. Anybody that comes and clicks on an element on your page that does something for them opens a new tab, allows them to search, opens a new page, anything that's actionable gets classified as a live click. Other are those clicks that happen in dead space that there are no links to, or you'll hear me start to use the term missed opportunity clicks. Note there's a lot of value in paying attention to missed opportunity clicks. If I go back to live and I focus on this link, I only had 10 clicks on this link that we thought was quite powerful. When I go to other and I look at the paragraph above, I see that I have 53 clicks in this paragraph, but clearly there are no links. This is an indication that the visitors that are reading this want more information that's related to this paragraph. Here's an opportunity to optimize this page further. If I put it on the both tab, which combines live and other clicks together, I now have an excellent UX UI design report. If I come up here to search, and I see 665 clicks have occurred in my search field, which is great, that's what we want. But then I start to look at these dead clicks and notice the border. The red border is around my search field, but this gray border shows some white space outside of my search field area. Now, it is only five clicks that have occurred in these dead spaces. But as I start to drill down further and I look, I have another 13 clicks in this larger area. Now I'm at 18. Again, 18 compared to 665 is not significant. 
until I come up here by the title and see that I have 318 clicks of people clicking here. This is what we would call a missed opportunity to make a better experience for visitors and ease, make it easier for them to search. So this is a really good report for looking at design features where you can just tighten things up and make it a little more easier. So that's our main reports. I am going to jump over here to another snapshot. And one of our newest reports that I want to talk about is our page performance report. So looking for an icon that looks like a bar chart here. By default, it's turned on, but if I click on this, it will turn it off. And I can click back on to turn it on. So this is a page performance report. It was tracking data at the same time that the snapshot was tracking data for all our other reports. And it gives you an idea of the visitors who were tracked, what their experience was from a page performance level. So you have the median page load, which is showing about average on here. You have the slowest page load. So the person that experienced the slowest page time was six minutes and nine seconds at this point. When you see high page loads that concern you, the next step that we recommend you take is use Google Lighthouse and run that tool on your page to learn more of how to optimize the page further. Rage clicks on this particular page is quite high or poor. A rage click occurs when a visitor clicks on the same element multiple times in less than two to three seconds. To find out more about rage clicks, you can go to the confetti report or the overlay report. Clicking on either of these links will take you directly to that report and open that filter so you can learn more. You can also view videos that were made during the capturing of this data where rage clicks occurred. Dead clicks is an overview of how many people are clicking in areas where there are no links. It, it doesn't do anything for them, doesn't take them to another page. Like rage clicks, you can click for the confetti, the overlay, or video recordings to see what is it that people are trying to learn more about. Page bounces, by definition for us, is when a visitor comes to your page, the page loads in their browser, but yet they make no clicks or they do not scroll your page. If this occurs, we count that as a page bounce. And then we have this new total errors report, which is related to your video recordings. So visitors who have landed on this page and triggered an error on the page will show up here and tell you how many errors and what's, what is the type of errors. These errors show up on what's the console or the developers tab. The majority of visitors will never have this open while they're visiting a page. So some of these errors may not affect their experience on your page. But it's a really good idea to check out these errors and to check out the video recordings to see, are visitors having a bad experience? If they are, it could be related to this error. If they're not, it's an error that you should pass on to the web developer so that they can look into it further and just clean up that sort of thing. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time, and I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, please check out our Help Center at help.crazyegg.com or email our support team by submitting a request through our Help Center. Thank you.